is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Y'all ready for this? Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. This is a <laughs> sham. No. No. Nope. Y'all, just stop. Get real. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, welcome to DBL. It is Al and Tori, otherwise known as Mac and... Cheese. I, well, you kind of bullied me into saying cheese. that. But yes. it <laughs> cheese. It is mac and cheese. It's mac Back and cheese. Again. Yeah. It's good to see you. It's just like the pandemic, but minus the pandemic, so I'm just with my friend. That's exactly right. And we're with yeah, all well, of you. Well, they're not here yet, but like 10 minutes. They're I'm your friend. friend. You are my Stop friend. Stop it. it. And we're so privileged that you guys are watching with us. We have a great show for you. We want to talk about Netflix, first of all. They are taking a big stand in support of some of its more controversial content. In a new memo sent to staff, Netflix is reportedly telling employees, hey, if you're offended by our content, you can leave. Bosses also warn them that they will not censor specific artists or voices, even if employees consider the content harmful. Now, a lot of people think this memo is in response to none other than Dave Chappelle's recent stand-up special that featured a conversation about trans people. Some felt that conversation was offensive and hurtful. There was uh, walkouts with employees. What was your first thought when you heard this? And also, could this also be a boon for Netflix because they need to lose some employees? anyway. Yeah, I thought that was such a great point that I hadn't thought of. You know, when I first saw this, it just kind of showed me that uh, that phrase, no man is an island. And if you take that to the corporate world, nobody is an island. And this right now in this climate, you got to pick a side. And are you... You we, can't be in the middle. We listen to our employees. We listen to our viewer feedback. If you're offended by that, we'll take that off. We'll take that down. We'll remove that host. Or you have other networks that are like, hey, we put this programming on. If you don't like it, there's the door. If you work here, here's your last check. And it really is just two ways to look at it. It, it is kind of, again, just like black, white, red, blue. It's just like you have to pick a side. And it appears, Tori, Netflix is picking a side. What do you think about that? I kind of wonder what the audience, too, thinks also of brands in this social climate needing to make a stand. Like, they can't just leave it up in the air they have to say like we're going full in with no censorship or we're going to have censorship otherwise you, you sort of don't have a feeling you're connected to the brand right right i also think netflix is in some trouble i think they're uh wanting to use more uh expensive uh ratings to trying to get people in they're trying to get um people to not share their password i'm wondering if they want to do a layoff and this is the best way to do it i mean it is a good if you don't like it you can go and also like it's like if you don't want to have a roommate anymore and it's like hey you know come on dude i, I can handle both rents if you want to leave yeah i think that's kind of what we're looking at here but also i think netflix might have been a victim of its own success because if you think about just life in general it's just timing everything's timing and netflix uh, initially with the timing was unbelievable yeah the pandemic hits tiger now, king now you can't leave yeah. you know tiger yeah. king hits the biggest show everybody's talking about netflix and it's probably at its peak everybody was thinking like where's the stock gonna go because everybody's gonna be home for the next 10 years yeah, no right. one knows but then i think and it used to be a joke we watched all the Netflix that we wanted to watch. Every show, I watched The Sopranos, like, forever. I did, too. Yes, everybody <laughs> watched everything, and it was a joke. Like, I almost got to the end of Netflix. A lot of us did. Yeah. And I think that then led rise to what I call the cartels, like the, the Travel Channel cartel that's got, like, the HGTV, mm -hmm. the home flipping shows, and then you've got Disney. They came Discovery. and got your husband and your kids with the, the Pixar, with the Disney movies and the UFC. And so all these things started cropping up as Netflix was a little weak, and I think here we are. Interesting. Netflix and chill, maybe just chill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From the joke. That, yeah. All that right. Was, that, was, that was very we're warming, we're warming him up, Al. <laughs> yeah, we're warming like him it. up. All right. The world's <laughs> richest man, it's not Al Jackson, it's oh. Elon Musk, has hit the pause button. Am I like button. the second? You're, I think, the third. Okay. Um, hit the pause button on his takeover on Twitter. I called this. Elon Musk tweeted he's putting the deal on hold until he can find out for sure how many spam and fake accounts are on the site and if they really make up fewer than 5% of users. He did follow up tweeting he's still committed to the acquisition, but many people are saying this is a tactic to drive down the $44 billion price tag of his takeover or as reason to eventually back out completely. So he was told that the bots only represented 
wanted fewer than 5%. And that way he realized he could make money if we monetize Twitter. He's now hearing that bots are way more than 5%. And he's saying, I might back out of the deal. Is this an excuse just to get Musk out of there? Because Twitter is now shares are dropping. Mm. What do you think? Is this a, is this, is this a panic run? Well, I, I just find it interesting that he got the real information now. Yeah. now yeah. You know, usually when I drop 44 billion, if you were going to buy a Civic. <laughs> I feel like you should. Wouldn't you have all the information? You'd be like, oh, a couple weeks later, I learned this important thing about it. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't go. You have to pedal with your feet. No, that's <laughs> that's something you would know before you you plunk down $44 billion. There were so many articles in the, uh, written when this, and you called it. You called it, Tori, that this was, he was not going to go through with this. This was grandstanding. This is a way to get his name in the news. It absolutely worked. All the, the sites that I listened to were like, this is nonsense. And here we are with the, oh, I didn't know, I didn't know Twitter had bots. Otherwise, right. I'd have been in. You it think was, he would have done. That's all Twitter is. That's, and we know that. Yeah. You think he would have done his due diligence. Now, the interesting thing is also, he keeps saying, I'm going to use Tesla shares to buy Twitter. Well, Tesla shares are dropping, mm -hmm. and there might be now not enough shares for him to buy Twitter. Oh, so then he'll have to back out of the deal, and he still maintains his credibility with his Joe Rogan audience. Like, hey, bro, I wanted to buy it, but you know, you know, I was smoking some weed and I forgot. You know, <laughs> like he's he's backing out of the deal, but he gets credit for doing it, totally. and that's what he wants. He wants to look like this maverick, but he, when it was time to throw down that money, he backed up. He did, and, and we all saw it. Let's see. Let let me know on YouTube or on the app if you think he's actually gonna go ahead with this. I think the deal's going to not happen. I really do. But I could be wrong, and I'd love to hear it. Also about Elon, he's making headlines for comments he made about American workers and their work ethic compared to Chinese workers. So take a look at this. There's just a lot of super talented, hardworking people in China that are um, strongly believe in, in, in manufacturing, and, and they will, they'll, they won't just be burning the midnight oil, they'll be burning the 3 a.m. oil. Whereas in America, people are trying to avoid going to work at all. So, I have a lot to say about this. Mm -hmm. One thing is, if you didn't know, he is a Shanghai factory, Elon Musk, and it's called the Giga Factory. The nickname is Giga Sweatshop. Mm. They have a closed loop system where uh, while locked inside the factory, workers are reportedly made to work 12 hour shifts, six days in a row, and then sleep on the factory floors. And at some point, they're not allowed to leave the building. Sort of like a prison. What do you think? Mm. So his response to American workers looking what I think is for a good work-life balance in response to being lazy as opposed to this, which to me seems like a sweatshop, is a little off the mark. I think I'm, I'm, I speak for a lot of folks. I, I'm, I'm tired of billionaires telling people that they're lazy. Uh, you talk about being Amen. born on third base. He, I mean, he was in the dugout after crossing home plate when he was born. Yeah. He, An emerald mine um, uh, heir, just so you guys know, in South Africa and Zambia. This man was born to billions. Go ahead. Literally born on top of it. Yeah. And so, like, the, I'm so tired of this narrative that Americans are lazy. It's it's not a thing. It is something that, that there is a certain collective of people that is trying to drive this narrative that it's always just like not like back in the old school days when people worked hard for a living it's like it, it, jobs have changed people aren't so much working in coal mines and on assembly lines but they are working three or four jobs dr doing uber doing graphic arts on the side raising their kids maybe doing a wag walking dogs on saturdays it's just work just looks different i'm so tired of this corny narrative that we're lazy from him yeah, Stop. yeah. yeah and, maybe and, maybe if he wasn't so lazy he could find out the twitter's got some bots on there good call and miss me with that whole working the 3 a.m. Midnight, midnight oil. There are suicides in Asian countries of overworking. There are nets put down for people who throw themselves over building for overworking. This is not a safe environment. I don't think it's a and, very and fair the messaging, environment. messaging. The messaging is important. Exactly. Yeah, go to work. Don't, don't do what you want to do. Right. Go to work. Stop being lazy. It's a, it's a very dangerous narrative to push. Right, and that's where you'll find your dignity. Mm -hmm. Wow. Let us know what you guys think coming up on DBL. Remember the Snapple lady? Yes. We sat down with her in classic commercial stars. Where are they now? But First, we got to hear your thoughts on this. Is calling a man bald a sexual harassment comment? We're talking about it coming up next. Closed captioning provided by Daily Blast Live is always focused, always on cue, always ready, always timely. This May, don't miss a day. DBL is all new every day.
All right, guys, what's going on? A lot of you writing him in. Um, Tori, Jennifer N says he is going to back out. We have Jeff. Um, uh, yeah, deal, yeah. what happened? It's Jeff all a publicity out. stunt. He gets Trump's base riled up again for midterm, says Aaron Ledet. I didn't think about that. Um, you need something scripted? No. You sure? Yes. It turns out I've taken some improv class. <laughs> um, streaming all the rage. Uh, speaking of Friday the 13th, I wanted to know if anyone is scared of it. Or does everyone here like like it? It's become a cool thing to like like it. Friday the Thirteenth. I love spooky everything. Yeah, and they get to, you get tattoos and stuff on it. Does Are anybody you? do the marathon? What's that? The Friday the Thirteenth marathon. What's oh, that? Do you mean yes. like running? No. Oh, Jason. Okay. Why are okay. you guys still there? <laughs> I thought you meant you ran <laughs> like a marathon. marathon. Oh, you mean like Jason? I actually like some of the oh. Friday the Thirteenth. I like the. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. I like Jason in New oh, York. It was corny and weird. I liked it. He punched the guy's head off. I like Jason. Is it? Yes, it's hilarious. It's well, awesome. Do you know the, the fear of the number thirteen is called triskaidekaphobia? If you didn't know, people have a hard time getting on elevators because of the thirteenth oh, floor. Yeah. They don't like the number oh, 13, oh, but it's oh, become oh, trendy yeah, yeah, yeah. to like Jeff it now. A lot, of whole, uh, a lot of places don't have a 13th floor. Which is yeah, strange. but now you get like tattoos, drink specials on the 13th. This there, will be the only 13th this year, yeah. Friday the 13th. Yeah. Next yeah. year will be January the 13th, one day after my birthday, which will be yeah, made like, a big deal. About. I wonder if anybody <laughs> watching, uh, their lucky number is 13. I, like, so that's what I wonder. Oh, down okay. on, uh, roulette. A lot of people What's like your roulette 13. Number? 33, baby. Oh, I'm, 33 I'm Grant 22. Hill. Chris, what are you? My favorite number? Yeah, yeah. roulette. Oh, oh. Yeah. He has a lot of numbers. He deals yeah. with numbers. Yeah, that's See? a very complicated yeah. question. Yeah. <laughs> I think Jeff, Jeff is 16. I have an 16. Your lucky roulette number 16. 23. I okay, thought you were 16. Oh, well, Welcome back. Our next topic is about, you know, manly things. So I thought we'd bring in Jeff Schroeder. He's a man. Also, well, my, my dad's bald, so I'm here to represent. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And you yourself are bald. That tattoo pay, pay is excellent. <laughs> it really is. It's really good. It's a great win. Um, it's not. But uh, calling a man bald is now considered a form of sexual harassment. That's what a panel of judges in the UK recently ruled. It all stemmed from a case where a man was called, quote, fat and bald and later fired. The judges said calling the man bald was a form of sexual harassment because it's more common for men than women to lose and experience hair loss. I don't know if that's true. I know. So the insult was inherently then related to sex. By the way, the panel of three judges who ruled on this all happened to be guess is what ball wow can you imagine the attorney walking in there like oh this, this isn't gonna go great i thought in england yeah. they wore the wings yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah jeff what, this sounds exactly like a curb your enthusiasm episode <laughs> right, totally right? larry because they always he's always discriminated against he thinks because he he's thinks, bald yep where have we gone in the world has it yeah. gotten this crazy why even get up when you could just be a victim? You know what I mean? Why even get out of bed? I'm gonna go to gym. Ah, I'm gonna be a victim. Who cares? I'm not gonna go. <laughs> but it, look, the fat. Yeah, you got a case. If you can't, people can't be calling you fat at work. But I think if you're bald, it, I don't know if that could be said as a negative thing. If it's, I think, oh, yeah. first of all, I think a lot of people, a lot of people think it's an attractive quality. So I think if you are describing somebody like, oh, Jeff, he's the bald guy by the water cooler. I don't think that that's that insulting. Well, fat and bald makes me the think. Fat, yeah, and, and that part. <laughs> it seems like it's now you're was, now you're going down a different road. Yeah, now the fat yeah. was the yeah. Was thick yeah, well you're me. clearly saying bald equals somewhat I don't know equals what? messy, lazy, not good bald worker, is the ageism. You can be. Right. So my question is, what about women who are also bald? How is that not an issue? Don't look at me. <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> how, what do you, you feel about that? Yeah. I just feel I, like I, I, I don't. I don't think baldness is necessarily a gendered issue. Are there more men maybe that ha go bald? Yes, but people go bald for a lot of reasons, including chemo. I mean, there's a lot of do you think, layers. A, here. a lot of the people that I know, including my father, right? They lean into their 
baldness, right? right? They have to. All my friends that are going bald, they lean into it. Good-looking guys, they Bruce Willis it up. You know what I mean? John Travolta, they paved the way. Up, they yeah. paved the way. Michael Telly Jordan. Savalas, to yeah. bring it back to the Telly Mount Rushmore of all, bald. Shout out to Telly Savalas. <laughs> you have to be a certain age to know Telly Savalas. <laughs> when my grandparents were still alive and I'd be like at their house and there'd be magazines around. Uh, sorry to scare the young PAs, but there were magazines, magazines where people paper. picked them up. Yep. And on the back there would be like Telly Savalas like trying to sell those cards for Lake Tahoe. <laughs> and he'd have a cigar and I'd be like, I don't know what cool is, but he's I wanted to be him, but I didn't know what it was. Me, I don't know either. What if there was a Mount Rushmore of balls? Oh. Five Who's ball. the number one? Telly, I mean, yeah, who's you, who would you I say Michael Jordan. Who do you think of immediately when I say bald celebrity? Who do you think of immediately? So you're playing the same game. Yeah, who do you think of immediately <laughs> other than Telly? <laughs> who do you think? Jordan. Jordan? I think Bruce Willis. All right. What okay. do you think? Telly Savalas. Right, I God, said it five times. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. This is more of a Telly Savalas segment than anything else, and I'm here for it. Yeah. Would I'm you down. ever go, if you were losing your hair, would you guys ever do it? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that's the only way to go, right? I, maybe by the end of the show, we could get maybe some because, anime listen, to see what ooh, they would look like. I don't want to. If, if you're doing a come over, everybody knows. Yeah, yeah. we know. Knows. We know. It's hard to let it go, though. Yeah. It's tough. It's, not, it's hard to let that one strand just mm -hmm. end. But and your hair's parted. It is, but it's not bald. Coming up on ZBL, <laughs> our hilarious interview with the Snapple lady. Did the company really receive that much mail? There she is. Stay with us. She is so adorable, y'all. On May 9th, President Joe Biden announced the Affordable Connectivity Program, offering discounted high-speed internet for tens of millions of Americans with low income. The $14.2 billion program provides $30 monthly internet subsidies and $75 monthly subsidies in tribal areas for lower income households. People are eligible for the program if their income is 200% or less than the federal poverty guidelines, which is about $27,000 for a one-person household or $55,000 for a four-person household in most states. Households can also qualify for the ACP through participation in some federal programs, like Medicaid, SSI, SNAP, and WIC, among others. Verify viewer Deborah texted the team to ask how to sign up for the program. So let's verify. Do eligible Americans need to apply for the Affordable Connectivity Program to get discounted internet service? Our sources are the White House, the Federal Communications Commission, and the Affordable Connectivity Program website. The answer is yes, you do have to apply for the program. According to the Federal Communications Commission, the government agency which is overseeing the program, it's a two-step process. First, just visit the ACP website and submit an application online or print out a mail-in application. Second, once your application is approved, contact a participating internet provider to select a plan and ask to have the discount applied to your bill. Now, if you're already subscribed to Lifeline, a federal program that lowers the cost of phone or internet service, you don't need to reapply for the ACP, according to the program's website. Instead, just reach out to your internet company directly to enroll. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. Love that jingle. She was the lovable lady from Long Island who answered the fan mail for one very popular drink. Earlier, we spoke with the star of the classic Snapple commercials, Wendy Kaufman. Hello from Snapple. Today's letter is from Nancy Lambert. Her dog Shane can be asleep in the back bedroom, but if you open a Snapple, she comes running. Hi, an eligible Snapple fan from Wisconsin writes, I take sudden glances at this girl while I drink bottles of Passion Supreme Soda, but I can't find the nerve to talk to her. Can you please help? Hi from Snapple. We got a letter here from Dirk MacGyver. Your iced tea is the best I have ever tasted. I am not lying when I say this. We'll see about that. Yes! <laughs> Wendy, I have a question because I didn't know this before this, but you were an actual Snapple employee before you started filming these commercials. But, and kind of a turn here, that job came at a really difficult time in your life. Do you mind just sharing a little bit about what was happening for you? 
it's like sobriety Thursday. I'm like laughing. <laughs> so you. anyway, you know, I, I grew up in the 80s, so I too was a cocaine addict. <laughs> and I was working in my family business, and they told me that I had to get out of my family business, tough love. And um, one of the owners of Snapple, knew me he was like a surrogate father and there was a rule at snapple no friends no family and he talked to everybody and he cleared it for me and it became my sober job wow. but i just gotta let you know that i turned him down two times before he took me on but he told me i'm only paying you twenty thousand dollars a year so you're gonna have to work for it and that made me feel really good wow. about this you job. earned it yeah. you yeah. earned it this wow. is such an incredible story because you started to notice the fan mail coming into the Snapple building, but no one was paying attention to it but you. So why did you start answering them? It's like, it's like me. It's like me. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were growing so crazily at the time, and I knew, you know, from rehab, you know, I had gone away for 28 days. It became a 10-month ordeal, and they told me specifically, the best place for you to be, Wendy, is out of your own head. Right. So when these letters started to come in, I realized it could be a vehicle for me to do good for others. Mm. So they sent me back to school, and I started to answer everybody who wrote to us and it was unbelievable because it, it became community stuff it became sponsorships into great things and you know what like i just remember so vividly looking in the mirror like after about a year of sobriety and seeing finally the sparkle in my wow. eye and i started to cry and i just said i am never going back and they believed in me more than i believed in myself but wow. it's going to be 33 years yeah, for me so I'm pretty damn proud. You were talking about all these letters you guys were, were receiving. I just want our viewers to understand by year three of filming, you were receiving 3,000 <laughs> letters a week. Okay, first of all, it was such a nutty time because if you think about it, it's before social media. Yeah. So I'm getting oh, 3,000 stamped letters a week, you know? And some of the crazy ones, like one of my favorites, I was never invited to the prom. My best friend ended up taking me, but um, I was was invited to a prom and there was no damn way that I wasn't going to the prom and I actually went with the Today Show filming because it was going to be recorded that I didn't care that I was 33 years old Amazing. but I was going to the prom. <laughs> Wendy I gotta ask you this because we're running out of time but after these commercials we really didn't see you. We've been talking for just a couple minutes. I want to see more of you. Me too. What have you been doing and why aren't you on TV more? It's so nice of you. I was not an actress, so I didn't really care. I did my job. I wasn't like looking for fame and fortune. I was in my 50s when all this started to happen and my parents started to get sick and I started to travel to Florida as the oldest child sure. to be there and to help them. So I was busy getting my life in order, right. my parents' life in order, and I have been toying with a book. You have to start a podcast. We're out of yes. time, yeah. but I'm telling you, I'll help you out. Yeah. I won't, but I will. I'll, 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 I'll give you the idea. My life announces. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think you're fantastic. Andy, we appreciate Mom. you. It's so good to see your face. Thanks so much for today. We'll be right back. Thank you. Bye. Apple Pie. Thank you. So fun. Promotional consideration is brought to you by. Pictures of empty grocery store aisles where there should be baby formula are being shared on social media. Some parents say they're struggling to find formula for their babies, and if they do find some, stores are limiting how much they can purchase. A Verify viewer recently asked whether there's a national shortage of baby formula, so let's verify. Our sources are the American Academy of Pediatrics parenting website, Dr. Stephen Abrams, professor of pediatrics at the University of Texas Dell Medical School, Abbott Nutrition, Data Assembly, a data collection company providing access to grocery and retail pricing records, and CVS. Professor of Pediatrics Dr. Stephen Abrams says there is a formula shortage, which he attributes in part to supply chain issues. The general supply chain issues that have affected us since COVID have led to intermittent shortages of formula ever since COVID. 
According to CVS, their stores are limiting the amount of baby formula products customers can purchase, quote, following supplier challenges and increased customer demand, unquote. According to an April 2022 report from Data Assembly, more than 30% of baby formula products were out of stock across more than 11,000 stores in the U.S. during the month of April. That's a 7% increase from January. While some generic formula brands are available, Abrams says there's a critical shortage for specialized formulas, like those for babies with severe allergies. Abrams also says the shortages have recently been exacerbated by recalls of several formula products. For example, in February, Abbott Nutrition, a large infant formula manufacturer, announced two rounds of major recalls of some powder formula products manufactured in its Sturgis, Michigan facility due to bacterial contamination. The recalls included Similac, Alimentum, Elicare, and Similac 6040. A spokesperson for Abbott Nutrition said, quote, we are doing everything we can to address the infant formula supply shortage, unquote. To help ease the impact of shortages and prevent hoarding, the American Academy of Pediatrics is recommending that parents buy no more than a 10-day to two-week supply of formula. So we can verify, yes, there is currently a shortage of some baby formulas in the U.S. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Till. Twenty years and cancel somebody for what they did? You know, what? you're out of order. I woke up and said, "Today is gonna be a good day." Yeah. At some point, you gotta decide for yourself if you're gonna stand up for what's wrong or what's right. Like, are we living in bizarro world? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I ran out of steam there. <laughs> I have to just push back on Please. that. I think it's an okay conversation to have. That's what really rubbed me and a lot of people the wrong way. I love this story. Welcome back. Is your refrigerator running? Well, you better go catch it. Oh, what if it's <laughs> leaking, though? It's time for some DVL home tips presented by American Home Shield. So water underneath the fridge could be a melted ice cube, but it also could indicate a serious problem. So if you're dealing with a leaky fridge, make sure your fridge is level. If your fridge has an ice maker, make sure the water line isn't frozen. Check that drain pan for any damage. Unclog your freezer's defrost drain. And finally, make sure your ice maker is still working. And if you have crushed ice, you are a winner in this life. And you know what else can help protect your refrigerator? American Home Shield. An American Home Shield home warranty plan helps cover many things homeowners insurance leaves out, like breakdowns of home systems and appliances, so you can rest easy knowing you're ready for whatever breakdown strikes next. Go ahead and visit ahs.com to find a plan that is right for you. Do we have what I think we have? Just Jeff. Jo okay. okay, before we go, our graphics team is able to see what our friend, Mr. Schroeder, would look like. My dad? Son <laughs> no, you. Oh. Do you look like your dad? Wow. I I, actually, I kind of do in that picture. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole different jet. Yeah, great job by the graphics team. But yeah, yeah that, that's it. You're great, like an accountant. Listen, I don't know if I'm going to say great job by the graphics team. <laughs> they, they only had two minutes. But <laughs> hey, I'll write. If I got a rocket, I got a rocket. Yeah, you look like an accountant. I, I, it's not a I bad like it. Let me handle your business. Oh, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> CBL is new every day. We will see you Monday, same time, same place. By the way, thank you for letting us be in your houses in the morning. We appreciate it. Be good to yourselves and others. Bye, guys.